so we have seen how these problems can be addressed and you can find out the maximum likelihood estimator for the population parameters in each of these cases now emily is very important and essential for us because it has very nice properties and it helps us to tackle situations which cannot be done using the method of moments estimator method so here the first situation is emily can deal with or it can provide you an estimator even if you have a restricted range for the parameter suppose you are taking a random sample from poison with parameter lambda we know that lambda is always greater than 0 right in general that lambda is greater than 0 however if in case it is restricted that it is greater than 0 but it is also less than equal to 4 then in that case how do you find the emily for this right and such cases might arise in your real life because we may not always be interested in dealing with the entire parameter space that lambda is greater than 0 but rather we want to restrict it here in this case it would be restricted from 0 to 4 right so in that case also how you can find the updated MLE or if you are having a random sample coming from normal distribution with mean mu and variance as 1 so one variance is fixed mu is in you are interested and we know that mu can vary from minus infinity to infinity rather if you restrict it that mu has to be greater than 2 mu will be at least 2 in that case your parameter space that was initially from minus infinity to infinity now it is reduced to 2 to infinity so in such cases can you find the emily for this parameter and yes the answer is provided by the maximum likelihood estimator and now we will answer and address these two examples and see what will be the resulting emily so the first example in this case when we are talking about restricted range so we have that x1 x2 xn is following poison distribution with parameter lambda where lambda is less than equal to 4 okay so lambda naught that is given to you that is the threshold value lambda naught is 4 over here okay what is the pmf for poison distribution pmf is probability that x is equal to x it is e to minus lambda lambda to the power x over x factorial where x takes value 0 1 2 and so on because if you see So here if x is representing the poison distribution you might consider it as the number of accidents that happen on a particular road then x can either be that no accident happens or it can be 1 and 2 and so on okay so here that is why you have the support as going from 0 1 2 and so on so if you have to find the mle what will happen so the likelihood function for this would be first of all product of this from i1 to n e to the power minus lambda lambda to the power xi over xi factorial right so this would essentially be e to the power minus n lambda lambda to the power summation xi and this would be product xi factorial okay this is the likelihood function so till now we are moving in the same way as we have obtained earlier we can also take the log here okay so suppose you take log of this when you are taking log it could be minus n, lim n lambda okay so this one would be minus n lambda plus summation xi times log lambda and here it would be minus log of product x size okay when you differentiate this with respect to lambda because that is the parameter of interest it would be minus n plus summation x i over lambda now if you look at the behavior of this if it is this would be greater than 0 if your lambda over here is less than the sample mean 
right because lambda if you see what is the behavior in this case so summation xi by lambda is greater than n so basically it means that summation xi by n is greater than lambda and this is what basically sample mean is greater than lambda right so you have lambda greater than x bar and the reverse would happen if lambda is greater than x bar okay so in this case So what is happening is that when your lambda is approaching sample mean, it is increasing function and it will achieve the maximum at the sample mean and it will decrease as you move ahead. Okay, so when if you want to plot it, so you can see that if lem this is lambda and this is your log of the lambda, right? So here somewhere you have your sample mean, right? So this is your log of L lambda. Right. Now, what you have in your question is that lambda is less than equal to 4. Okay. So, lambda is the rate at which the events occur. So, if the rate you are restricting it that we do not want to consider it for the entire parameter space, the rate is less than 4. Okay. Lambda is less than equal to 4. We are essentially looking at lambda less, less than equal to lambda naught situation. Right. So, here you have lambda naught okay so you will see that where your lambda naught lies if lambda naught is greater than x bar and we are interested in the area lambda less than equal to lambda naught so it means we are focusing on area let me use a different color so we are use focusing on this part right in this situation where the maximum is occurring the maximum is attained at this peak right which is basically your sample mean right in the other situation what it can be if you have this again if you plot this is lambda it's increasing here you have the sample mean but your lambda naught over here is coming to the left hand side lambda naught is less than the sample mean in this case this is your log l lambda okay and here your interest would be because lambda is less than equal to lambda naught so you will be focusing on this area now here where the maximum will be achieved it will be at this point okay so if you summarize them what will happen is that lambda had that the estimator it will have two situations it depends upon where your lambda naught is as compared to the sample mean so if your sample mean is greater than lambda naught that is this situation in this case what will be the mle MLE would be lambda naught because here the maximum is attained at lambda naught only. If x bar is less than equal to lambda naught, that is this situation, here the maximum will be attained at x bar only. Okay. So here you will write x bar. And if you want to summarize it, it is basically minimum of the sample mean and lambda naught. Because here also, if you see which is minimum if you consider this case here the minimum is x bar because that is less than lambda naught and in this case lambda naught is the minimum okay so which says that minimum of x bar and lambda naught would be the mle for your lambda hat okay so if you suppose that if you would not have paid attention to this and you would have considered that lambda naught is greater than if you would have considered that okay lambda is greater than zero and let me calculate the mle as the usual form that we do then in that case your mle would be just x bar okay so you are basically ignoring the fact that lambda has been fixed to be less than lambda naught you are ignoring this lambda naught and that is why your answer is x bar and your result would be incorrect specifically in situations where lambda naught is less than because when lambda naught is less than x bar so your mle would be lambda naught it will no longer be x bar here okay so here if suppose lambda naught we have as 4 if the sample mean suppose comes out as 6 right then minimum of these two would be minimum of 4 and 6 is 4 right 
and 4 is what is your lambda naught so your estimator is lambda naught and if you would have gone with the usual procedure you would have said that MLE is sample mean that means it is 6 so you can see that how the difference is coming and that is why it is important to pay attention to the support of this or you can say the parameter space with which we are working okay so this is about your first situation where you have lambda less than equal to lambda naught or 4 you have written and uh, probably this you can see that it can be considered in the other situation where lambda is greater than 4 suppose you want to see lambda is greater than 4 then you will also move ahead in the same way and again you will make a graph of that and then it would make it easy for you to visualize it okay the next example that we had was if you are drawing a random sample from normal with mean mu and variance 1 and here in this case we said that okay the mean has to be greater than 2 right or you can consider that it can be any situation where normal distribution applies you can consider that mu is greater than 2 you are not focusing on the entire support okay so in this case as we have already seen for normal distribution the pdf would be sigma is 1 so here the pdf would be 1 over root 2 pi e power minus 1 by 2 x minus mu whole square where x takes value from minus infinity to infinity if i have to write the likelihood function now since it is independent of your sigma square which is fixed as 1 so you just have to write the likelihood function here the parameters is only mu okay so it would be 1 over 2 pi raised to the power n by 2 e to the power one minus 1 by 2 summation xi minus mu whole square fine now we need to differentiate it log of this log of l mu would be minus n by 2 log 2 pi minus 1 by 2 summation x i minus mu whole square ok when you differentiate it with respect to mu what you get is so here minus 1 by 2 is there so 2 and minus 1 by 2 let me just write it twice of summation x i minus mu and here minus would become plus so this would just be summation x i minus mu which is nothing but summation x i minus n mu right summation x i minus n mu now if you look at the behavior this would be greater than 0 if mu is less than your x bar right so if mu is less than sample mean that is summation x i by n this would be greater than 0 and it would be less than 0 if mu is greater than x bar okay so you have two situations so let us just draw this and see so basically this is your mu and this is your normal distribution so here you have some sample mean so for this first it is increasing and then it is starts to decrease and here it is log of l mu you have okay now what you are given in the question is that mu is greater than equal to 2 or you can say that this is mu naught so we are focusing on the region for mu greater than equal to 2 mu naught okay so now the first situation can be so we use this if mu naught lies to this side right if mu naught lies on this side in this case we are focusing on that area where mu is greater than or equal to mu naught so which means we are basically focusing on this side right and in this region what will be though your estimator in this case maximum is occurring at this point right so mu naught will be your mle in this case the other situation can be when you have Let us redraw this here is mu this is x bar and here mu naught is present right 
okay now again you have to look at mu greater than equal to mu naught so it means you are focusing on this region right and here the maximum is occurring at this point okay so if you want to summarize this what will be your estimator for mu it would be mu hat would be depending upon whether x bar is less than mu naught or x bar is greater than equal to mu naught when x bar is greater in this case right x bar is greater than mu naught so the sample mean would be the answer and if x bar is great sorry if it is less than mu naught if x bar is less than mu naught so it means mu naught will be the answer sorry so here if x bar is less than mu naught so mu naught is the answer to this okay and in the other case sample mean so basically we are looking at the maximum of x bar and mu naught whichever is maximum that would be the mle for mu maximum in this case because here the maximum is x bar this is bigger than mu naught and in this case maximum is mu naught okay so again you can see that if suppose mu not here is 4 and sample mean x bar comes out as 10 suppose so in this case you would compare these two and you would say that you will see whichever is maximum that would be your estimator if 10 is the maximum since in this case so 10 would be your estimator otherwise 4 would be there okay whatever value of mu not this is just a sample case that where mu not is 4 sometimes when you are looking at average income so mu not could be that you are looking at those people whose income are greater than 20000 suppose so you do not have to consider uh, anything else you are just going to see whose income mu not in that case would be your 20000 okay so mu not can be greater than 20000 mu not so you have to be careful with the support that is given or the parameter space with which you are dealing so we have seen how to address these situations and this basically reflects upon the benefit and the usefulness of the maximum likelihood estimation method in addition there are few remarks which i would like to add we have seen that both these methods can give you different answers as we have seen that when you are taking a random sample from uniform zero theta so in the method of moments you got twice of the sample mean and in mlu you got the largest order statistic that is x ordered n is the answer now it is possible that mle may not be unique okay and in this case you have that if you have a random sample from uniform theta minus 1 to theta plus 1 where theta is unknown in that case mle may not be unique so we will see that how what is the answer to that and the last one is that it may not even exist at times why if you are considering that x1 x2 xn follows binomial with parameter 1 and p and p is unknown so when you say binomial with parameter 1 and p it means you are talking about bernoulli distribution with parameter p right now bernoulli distribution can only have possibilities as 0 and 1 x can be the number of success can be either 0 and 1 now if all the xi's are 0 okay if all the xi's are 0 or if all the xi's are 1 the sample mean would be 0 in case all the observations are 0 all the failures you obtain it would be 0 and if all these all all of them are success then you would get 1 okay so we will see these two situations i will explain it to you so so first remark is already done so let us consider the second remark which says that if you are having a random sample from uniform theta minus 1 to theta plus 1 where theta is r this is the parameter space right so in this case what will be the density fx is 1 over b minus a So here, this is your b a, and this is your b, right? So one over this, this is basically one over two, where x basically lies between theta minus one and theta plus one. 
ओके सो हेयर यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट द लाइकलीहुड फंक्शन सो लाइकलीहुड फंक्शन वुड बी वन ओवर since it is 1 by 2 for single random variable it for n such it would be 1 over 2 raised to the power n and theta here you see that all the x i as we have said earlier also because uniform distribution has the parameter also involved in the support so you will write that all x i are there instead of that i can say that x ordered 1 till x ordered n fall between all the observations are between theta minus 1 and theta plus 1 okay now this is equal to saying that if i just say that x ordered 1 is less than x ordered n is less than equal to theta plus 1 okay so this is essential because if the smallest order is greater than theta minus 1 and the largest one is greater than theta plus 1 so it means rest of the observations would lie in between these two right so if you sum simplify this what will you get is that you will get a range for theta right so theta over here would fall between x ordered n minus 1 from here this side and the other one would be x ordered 1 plus 1 okay so this theta you see that it is a range of values and it is not a single estimator that you have obtained okay so you can take the average of this as an example and many other mles could be found out okay so this shows that mles may not be unique the next remark that we had was that if you are taking a sample from bernoulli p where p takes value between 0 and 1 so we know that bernoulli in case of bernoulli if x follows bernoulli distribution then what happens is that x can take value between 0 and 1 0 and 1 not between it is just 0 or 1 number of success in a single trial can be failure it means it is 0 and it can be 1 right now suppose you are taking a random sample from this case it means that if all these x i are failures right in each trial you get in each time when you are taking this x1 you get all of them as zeros right in this case what will be your mle if you recall from the first example second example of bernoulli distribution we obtain that p hat is nothing but x bar so in this case what will be your x estimate would be zero and if all the observations are success then your x bar would be one in this case right so here what is happening is the estimator that you are obtaining that is zero and one estimator takes value zero and one whereas the parameter does not take that value it is less it is greater than 0 and less than 1 so p is not equal to 0 or p is not equal to 1 so the estimator that you are proposing is not a good fit because the parameter population parameter does not even take that value okay so you have to be careful while you are dealing with such situations so we have seen different remarks and last topic of this week is basically the invariance property of mle the invariance property of mle is very useful because not many times we are not interested in the original parameter rather we are interested in some function of the parameter and we are interested to estimate that function of the parameter so in such situations we have a very nice property of invariance which says that if theta hat denotes the mle of theta and you have any one to one function that is g theta then the mle of this new one to one function is going to be g of theta hat okay so let us see how to answer this so the, here we are going to talk about invariance of mle invariance of mle so let us first write the theorem and then try to see how it can be proved the theorem says that if theta hat is the mle of if 
if theta hat is the MLE of theta, you have obtained the MLE of the original parameter, okay. With theta, suppose the parameter space for this is this. And you now define a one to one function that is phi. Suppose we denote this g theta as phi, g is one to one function, okay. And phi hat basically would be g theta hat, this would be the MLE of, you have to show that this g theta hat or you can say that phi hat is the MLE of phi. And let us see that we can consider this parameter space should to be capital phi over here, okay. So, if theta is the MLE of theta that is given to us and we consider a one to one function g, then we have to show that this phi hat or you can say that g theta hat is the MLE of g theta, okay provided it is a one to one function. So, let us try to see how we can do that. So, here if phi is basically g theta, then g inverse phi would be theta, okay. So, this inverse would be well defined because it is a one to one function and here the likelihood function can also be written as a function of theta only. So, if you are writing it, so L star phi over here, if you are using for likelihood function corresponding to phi as L star. So, instead of that it would be same as writing g inverse of phi also. So, here instead of that we can write L likelihood function of g inverse phi. So, that would be the same thing, okay. So, instead of that I can also just tell you that it is phi hat also then also it will be the same thing g inverse of phi hat. And what is phi hat for you? Phi hat is basically g theta hat, right? Because phi hat would be g theta hat. So, g inverse g of theta hat, which is basically L of theta hat. So, now let us try to prove the result. In the result, it was given that theta hat is the MLE of theta. Now, if theta hat is the MLE of theta, it means that the likelihood function corresponding to theta hat would be greater than the likelihood function of corresponding to any theta in the parameter space, right? This would be the maximum. So, L theta hat would be the largest one. So, if I have to show that g theta hat, that is phi hat, this is the MLE of phi equal to g theta, it means I need to show that the likelihood function that is L star of phi hat is greater than L star of phi for every phi in the suppose the parameter space is this, right, capital phi. I have to show this thing basically, right, because if this is the MLE, it is going to be the likelihood function corresponding to this has to be greater than the rest of them, okay. So, let us start with the left hand side. So, since L star phi hat would be what? So, instead of phi hat, we can write, we have shown that L star phi hat is nothing but same over here, L theta hat, right. We have obtained this property and L theta hat is greater than L theta because it holds for every theta, it has to be greater than that. And now, likelihood function corresponding to theta or it corresponds to phi, it would be the same thing, right, for every phi in this parameter space. So, basically what you have proved is that L star phi hat is greater than or equal to L star phi, right. And this is what you wanted to show. So, whenever you have a one to one function, it is easy to see by this result that the MLE would also get be transformed to that function, okay. Now, this is about one to one function. 
we may not always have a one to one function. So, we have a very important result which was given by Zehna in 1967, which said that if theta hat is the MLE of theta, then any function, if you have any function, it is not necessarily, it should not be necessarily be a one to one function. For any function g theta, this result again would hold true, right? The MLE of g theta would be g theta hat. Okay. So, using this, let us try to address the examples over here. So, in this case, suppose you have a random sample coming from Poisson distribution with parameter lambda, right? And you have to find the MLE of function of this parameter, not necessarily this, because for lambda, if you just recall, for lambda, the MLE was sample mean, that is x bar. Now, what you are asked is, you have to find the MLE for e raised to the power minus lambda, that is a function of the original parameter. And what is e lambda, e raised to the power minus lambda? This corresponds to because in the PMF, if you see probability that x is equal to x is e raised to the power minus lambda, lambda to the power x over x factorial. So, when x is 0, this basically would be e to the power minus lambda. Okay? And this is very important quantity over here because many times, suppose the shopkeeper or the owner of any office would like to know that how many customers are turning up. So, this is basically the number of suppose x i's in this case is number of customers that visit a cafe from 4 to 5 pm, right? And if the shop owner knows that no customer is going to come up, that is x1 is 0, then it means in that case, he would be able to find out that, okay, if no customer is coming, what is the probability? So, he can maybe employ or assign that person to some other task, right? Maybe 4 to 5 p.m. is a rush hour. So, we can consider during lunch hour, suppose 1 to 2 p.m., right? So, if in that slot, if no customer is coming, then probably they would close it down for lunch period and then they might return back. So, this probability is of very much importance and you are interested to find the estimator for this. You want to estimate this probability you know for lambda. So, the answer for this would be since MLE of lambda is sample mean, MLE of e raised to power minus lambda would be simply e raised to the power minus x bar. And this result is possible only because this invariance property of MLE exists. In same way, you can consider this Bernoulli distribution. For Bernoulli, we have already found the MLE, okay, because this is binomial 1p. So, the MLE you have to find for PQ, basically P into 1 minus Q, that is the variance because binomial or sorry, Bernoulli case, the mean is P and variance is PQ. So, here you have to find the MLE for the variance. Since MLE of P is X bar, you would have the MLE of P 1 minus P as X bar 1 minus X bar. Okay. So, here actually it should not be x, it should be a sample mean, okay. some random sample x1, x2, xn is coming from Bernoulli. So, as we have seen that it comes out as sample mean. So, in this case, it would be x bar 1 minus x bar. Okay. So, this basically completes your point estimation and theory of this week. So, here we learnt about what is the major concept behind having a point estimation, what is the concept of point estimation, confidence interval estimation, we will see later on and hypothesis testing also we will see in the coming weeks. And we saw that if we talk about point estimation, then we have two different methods, method of moments and maximum likelihood estimation. So, in this case, in each case we saw different examples and then we saw that why MLE is very important because it here you have the nice properties of invariance and we have the MLEs, you can obtain the MLEs even for the restricted range also. So, and also we will see if you study more into statistics, then you would see that why MLE is such an important estimator because it would have most of the properties that is desired for a good estimator. Okay, so that is why understanding the concept of MLE is very important. Now, in the next class, we will use Python and see that how these two methods can be applied and how the estimators that you are obtaining over here, that is sample mean or the largest order statistic or you have obtained n minus 1 over sample variance. If you calculate this, are they actually 
very close to your population parameter because then only you would say that okay this is a good estimator for us right and based upon that only we are going to see in the next week the property of unbiasedness okay so we will address these one by one thank you